Hi, everyone, and welcome to Smart Culture Education. This is the place where we make learning simple, clear, and engaging. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you can join us on this journey of mastering maths, science, and more. Let's learn about indicators, special substances that helps us find out whether something is an acid or a base, or sometimes even if a chemical reaction has taken place. Now, before we look at examples, let's quickly review what pH means. The pH scale is a number scale that runs from 0 to 14. Substances with a pH less than 7 are acids, substances with a pH of 7 are neutral, substances with a pH greater than 7 are bases or alkalis. Acids taste sour, like lemon juice or vinegar, while bases feel slippery, like soap or baking soda dissolved in water. Indicators help us see these differences by changing colour. So what exactly is an indicator? An indicator is a chemical that changes colour when it comes into contact with an acid or a base. It helps us determine whether a substance is acidic, basic or neutral. Now let's look at some common indicators used in the lab and what they tell us. First, we'll look at blue litmus paper. Now, blue litmus paper turns red when placed in an acidic solution. If you dip it into a base, it stays blue. So blue litmus helps detect acids. Here we have a red litmus paper. Red litmus paper turns blue in a basic or alkaline solution. If the solution is acidic, it stays red. Together, red and blue litmus papers are quick and simple ways to test acids and bases. Here we have universal indicator paper. Universal indicator paper contains a mixture of indicators. It shows a range of colors depending on the pH of the solution. Strong acids show red or orange, weak acids show yellow, neutral solutions show green, weak bases show blue, and strong bases show purple. By comparing the color to the pH chart, we can find the exact pH value. Here we have bromothymol blue. Bromothymol blue is a liquid pH indicator. In an acidic solution, it turns yellow. In a neutral solution, it is green. In a basic solution, it turns blue. It's often used to measure carbon dioxide levels because dissolved carbon dioxide forms an acid in water. Here we have methyl orange. Methyl orange is another liquid indicator. It changes color very sharply. In acidic solutions, it turns red. In neutral or basic solutions, it turns orange to yellow. It's often used in titrations because of its clear color change. Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution is a chemical test rather than a simple pH indicator. It is used to test for reducing sugars, such as glucose. When heated with a sugar solution, it changes from blue to green, yellow, orange, or brick red, depending on the amount of sugar present. The more sugar, the more intense the red color. Then we have methyl red. Methyl red works in a similar way to methyl orange, but changes color at a slightly different pH. In acidic conditions, it turns red. In neutral basic conditions, it becomes yellow. It's often used in biology and chemistry experiments to check pH ranges around four to six. Then we have phenolphthalein. Now, this is a colorless liquid in acidic and neutral solutions, but when added to a base, it turns a bright pink. This makes it very useful for titrations involving strong acids and bases. And then lastly, we have universal indicator solution. The universal indicator solution works the same way as the paper, but comes in liquid form. You can add a few drops directly to your sample. The color changes through the same pH range. Red for acids, green for neutral, and purple for strong bases, allowing you to match it to a pH color chart. So indicators are color-changing chemicals that tell us whether a substance is acidic, neutral, or basic. The pH scale runs from 0 to 14. Different indicators work best over different pH ranges, which is why scientists choose them carefully for each experiment. Next time you are in a lab, look closely at the color changes. 
they tell a story about the chemistry happening right before your eyes. Thank you for watching today's video on Smart Culture Education. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to stay updated, tap the notification bell so you never miss our next lesson. See you in the next video.